Hey guys, Caleb, we'll start with you tonight. You no tell me tonight, so David James will translate. <laughs> or I can translate. That's fine. I can. That would probably be better. I can do. I can do both. Not a problem. Uh, so Pablo, I'm curious. In a game like this, where VAR obviously play, played a pretty um, big role, do you see it as you know could have had four goals, or do you see it as kind of hey, we were lucky to get out with two? Um, I don't really see it like either. I, I think the the biggest takeaways for me in, in self reflecting in the last 30 minutes was um, starting the game with without two strikers. We've been a two striker team. And and that's what made it has made us dangerous. Has it allows us to have more numbers in the box? And I think second half was a, was a great example of that. Right? I think in the first half we had too many players coming to feet. We were and then when we did break corners on the wide ends, we had no one in the box. And so I, I think that's you know that's a good learning lesson for myself. Um, and um, but I think the second half. You know, the challenge was about character. You can you can lay down, um, or you can fight. You know, and there's two ways to affect a game tactically, and we did that by bringing in Danny and uh, Sava, and then there's uh, with intensity, and I think both of those things made made the biggest difference. But but again, I think it was a it was a real gut check, a real character check, and I'm just proud of the guys for the, for the way they responded in the second half. Um, not only get on the scoreboard, but but compete in the way they did. And, and, and that second half is reminiscent of the last few games we've had on the road. Um, getting forward, you know, winning balls in midfield, spraying it, and, and playing some, some really good stuff. And, and so for as, for as tough it is to not to get three points tonight, I, I think it's a victory in a lot of ways, um, given the situation that we were in at, at halftime. Um, again, Saba is is one of the most talented technical players I, I think in this league. Um, his ability, and 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 he's not. And the and the thing is, he's multi-dimensional. I, I think if you have wingers that like to go one v one, that's that's all they have. If you have wingers that cross, that that's what they have. Um, he adds uh, a high level of soccer acumen to to discern what this moment calls for. Is it a crossing moment or is it a one v one moment? Um, and I and I think. Again, in the first half, I think we made a lot of really uh, poor decisions, whether we were in transition or you know in, in the wide areas. I, I thought we struggled a little bit. Um, and I thought he just brought his level of, of, of class to the match. Um, and, and the most important part for me that he was, just, he was so engaged and he was willing the team forward um, with every possession that we had. I was just going to ask about Diego real quick. I think it's the first time he's gone a full 90 minutes in MLS play. And then you know, even in a stoppage time, he got the assist in the end for on, on Jay Glad's goal. Um, are you kind of just seeing him mature and just kind of grow into the kind of player that can go the distance in, in a lot of matches? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it's uh, – I think, obviously, the, the U20s, he played quite a few minutes. Um, and, and there's always a big jump physically, technically, tactically, uh, I think, from, from that level to what we're encountering on the week-to-week. Um, and again, I think Diego, uh, for for as exciting as he is, I think there's so much. You know, I, I think from the outside, there's just so much pressure for him to create every game and score goals every game. Um, for me, he's 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 trending in a a very good um, trajectory as far as um, the work on both sides of the ball. His his decisions are getting better in and around goal. I still we still need him to shoot more, um, but. For a young man, he's he's carrying himself with 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 a lot of poise and and a lot of confidence. And uh, you know, I think again in our setup, one of our wide players will always be the drop down guy, not our two forwards. Um, and 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 again, when you have Luna on one side and Sava occupying the spaces between the lines, but you still have stretch. Now we have multiple options and and guys that can create from from a you know from. A, a 10 position, but we have guys that are always going to be in the box. And um, so he's doing great. Down to nothing at halftime to what, what was the message to the guys? Well, again, I, I think the, the, the message was uh, we need more energy, right? We need more intensity in the work that we're doing. It was the game was so slow again, because when you have people coming back to the ball, it's not asking too many questions of, of, of the back line. And so they were aggressive, and, and we found ourselves really playing it east to west. 
when we're at our best, we're playing north to south. We're picking up second balls. We're, we're, we're repressing in, in, in a way. And so obviously the, the, the changes, I think, had a big impact uh, in, in the shape and, and the personnel. But, but I think it was the, the, the sharpness and the quickness w which we were playing through midfield, out wide, back central, forward. I, I just think we had a lot more options. And I think it was, in so what I said to him was, we need intensity and, and, and actions that, that warrant the crowd getting into the game. And, 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 and I think once we, you know, when Pablo scored that goal, I thought that was a moment. It took a little bit longer. Um, but again, the way we play is exciting. When we're when we're playing forward, when we're getting numbers in the box, when we're creating a lot of chances, um, and and I think that's what we needed at halftime. Hey, Paul, thank you for your time. Um, kind of based off of the previous question as well, inside of the locker room at halftime, were there guys that were kind of taking leadership roles, stepping up and getting other guys just kind of pumped up and ready for that second half? It, it was actually quiet, um, and and that's why we always have a coach that walks through the locker room. Um, to get a beat on the pulse of the team, the, the psychology of the team. Um, I, I think when you have two road wins, um, your psychology is poor me. It's not going my way. Um, and so I knew that I had to get in there, again, positively, own my part, and now in the second half, give me everything you got. You got you to gotta, you gotta run through a wall. You got to believe that you can do this. Um, and so, again, a, another great learning experience for, for the guys, myself and the staff. Um, but the most important thing is that we're all in this together. Um, and, and, the, and the guys, I think, felt so bad that we were in this situation. And again, life doesn't give you what you want. Sometimes you have to work extra hard to get what you want. And so it was a really it was a character check for the group. And given that you know we've gone to the East Coast, we've gone to the Midwest, we've rotated eight guys. Um, I couldn't be more happy about the, the, the mentality of the group and, and the football that we're playing. And so, um, yeah, just really proud of the guys. You shared your sentiment kind of after the game, how it was kind of a bittersweet feeling. Was that sentiment kind of shared by the guys after the game as well? Was it a different feeling than the, the feeling at halftime? Yeah, uh, 100%. I, again, when you're down 2-0, this game is, is, is ruthless, you know, because you want to push. But at the same time, the, it, you're, you're, you're towing a fine line. Because if you push too hard, you open up space behind, and they got some fast players. They got Reynoso, who can, who created both of their goals, um, and so you're always you're on that edge. And I think we towed it just right with a good balance of you know sometimes we went man to man, sometimes we dropped one off, but we were able to constantly keep the ball in play um, and 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 really make them defend. Uh, so um, I again when you, when you go from down to zero and you salvage a point. Um, the way I look at it is seven points in three games. Anytime you're 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 above two points a game, um, you're 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 in the playoffs. And more importantly for for me and the group, I think it is we keep that momentum going where we're getting points every game. And and I think that's a very powerful thing for the confidence of the group. I don't believe you guys have a game midweek this week, but three game coming off of a, th a three game span in about a week, I think about a week's time, was the starting lineup in this game purely a product of rotation? For the most part, and um, how nice is it going to be to kind of get that week off uh, in preparation for Saturday's yeah. game next week? Yeah. Well, again, it started probably I don't know six weeks ago when we were, when we had the Open Cup, and then we had uh, midweek league games, um, and and I've said this quite a few times. Initially, um, it's it, it isn't conventional to rotate seven eight guys a game, obviously, um, but with our group. And the mentality that we, we speak about every day, um, I think it's important to give guys opportunities. What they do with it is, is on them. And what they've done with it is shown that it doesn't matter who steps in um, that I can contribute. And energy for us is a big factor. And obviously playing three games in a week, you're not going to get the same energy if you play the same guys three games in a week. And so it's always balancing out um, that part of it, um, the energy part of it, and then tactically, how they 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 can you know the relationships and the different positions. Um, so there's there's a there's a ton that goes into it from from a thought perspective. But I think this week it was is basically you know we've been on the road and the travel takes it out of you. Going to D.C., coming back home for Father's Day, and then going out to St. Louis, uh, you're in different time zones. Your sleeping's wrong. I mean, there's a lot of variables that that a lot of people don't uh, or a lot of people underestimate the impact that it has, um, and that's why it's so difficult to win on the road. So. 
for me, it's just great that the guys that were out there tonight stepped up and did another fantastic job, which keeps the group competitive, which has guys vying for positions. Um, and, 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 and I think everyone feels like they're contributing to, to where we're at right now. Uh, preguntarte, Pablo, con respecto un poco, se vio muy bien el juego pasado ante San Luis, eh, el equipo se vio muy bien también ante DC, pero en casa, ¿qué está pasando? Porque el equipo no gana desde el 22 de abril en Liga, en MLS, porque ganaron en la Open Cup ante Galaxy, pero no, no hay ningún sentimiento con respecto a la manera en la que se juega en casa, porque pues estadísticamente se podría decir que es más fácil ganar en casa que ganar de visita, pero aquí está pasando lo contrario. Sí, eh, mira, eh, yo creo que con cada partido que no saca el resultado en casa, eh, se sube la presión de los jugadores, pero para mí, claro, un partido en casa, dormí en, en la cama tuya, estás con la familia, uno piensa que será más fácil ganar en casa, pero la realidad es que todo, todos los jugadores llevan su emoción, la presión que uno lleva por adentro y, y también yo creo que en los partidos que no hemos sacado resultados hemos creado, hemos creado muchas oportunidades para hacer gol. En el fútbol a veces te sale, a veces no, pero el, y por eso siempre hablo del esfuerzo del equipo, porque eso, la, 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 el esfuerzo y la mentalidad que tenemos de, cuando jugamos de visitante hay que estar más enchufado. ¿Por qué? Porque sos el equipo visitante. Hay que estar más agresivo. ¿Por qué? Porque tenés que, tenés que afectar la, 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 la afición. Acá en casa a veces creo que pensamos que a veces vamos a sacar el resultado porque estamos en casa. Pero eso al revés. Tenemos, necesitamos más mentalidad, más esfuerzo. Porque la calidad lo, te, lo tenemos. Así, eh, todos los partidos son diferentes, pero... Lo que vimos en el segundo tiempo es el, es el equipo que debe arrancar del primer... Y también las decisiones de, 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 del árbitro. Fue penal y cambió, es, cambió la decisión. O sea, son, 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 son eventos en el partido que afectan la psicología de, de un jugador. Sí, justo eso iba a comentar con respecto a... El cambio de decisión se vio claro que afectó a los jugadores en el terreno de juego. Eh, te vi hablando cuando se acabó el partido con los cuatro árbitros al finalizar. Eh, algo que les hayas comentado, eh, sí se vio dividida la afición inclusive en cuanto a las decisiones del árbitro. Inclusive analistas previo al partido estaban comentando lo mismo. Eh, ¿Qué pudiste hablar con ellos o qué les pudiste transmitir de acuerdo a las decisiones? Porque en lo personal creo que más allá de que el, el árbitra tomó la decisión, ella fue lo que marcó no penal y gol anulado por fuera del lugar, pero el VAR intervino en ambas situaciones. Sí, no, hoy día fue un, un partido raro de ese tema eh, y le, le, le pregunté por qué cambió la decisión del penal, porque estaba 10 metros de la jugada, la vio con, con, con sus ojos, estaba ahí, era penal claro y así, así pasan, los, así, así es el fútbol, Uno, hay, hay tantas cosas que puede afectar un partido y yo creo que esa llamada que, que cuando sacó el penal el equipo como perdió el, el, el aire un poco en el segundo cuando eh, anularon el, el gol de Pablo hasta el entrenador de Minnesota dijo en frente de, de los árbitros que era gol y no entiendo y no entiende por qué anularon el gol así pero por eso es difícil en esta liga, porque hay, hay, hay muchas cosas que afectan la resultado. Sí, lo pasa que siempre... Es que siempre nos toca lo mismo, es el problema, las malas decisiones. No, decir? pero tam también necesitamos afectar el juego. Pero poniendo... son dos decisiones. ¿no? Sí, sí, es difícil sacar un resultado, un, los tres puntos. Y con... que la cambia el bar, no, porque el árbitro la vio. Por eso, no entiendo. Pero no, no, como un equipo no podemos gastar energía en las cosas que no podemos ya, lo sé. A, afectar. Y, pero ojalá en el futuro esas decisiones van en nuestro favor. Pero lo digo porque hay que analizar dos cosas, el resultado y el juego. Uh -huh. Es decir, y el juego 
a mí me ha, me ha encantado. Al que le gusta el fútbol, me parece que vimos un grandísimo partido y el Real jugando a un nivel altísimo, como vimos en San Luis. Uh -huh. Lo hemos visto hoy, sobre todo en la segunda parte. Y era la primera pregunta que te iba a hacer, o bueno, te hago dos preguntas porque veo que nada más que puedo hacer una, te, hago, te hago doble pregunta. Una es, del punto de vista del resultado, eh, digo, del juego, es, eh, estos son de los partidos que, digamos, los jugadores mm, que dan el nivel más alto, ¿no? Y me refiero a, a cuando tú estabas comentando la salida de Sabarino, de Damir, le dan un salto de calidad al equipo y eso hizo un poco la diferencia. Y ellos con Reynoso, ¿no? Creo que en partidos tan igualados, esos son momentos... ¿O son jugadores que, que son los que hacen la diferencia? ¿no? Sí, yo creo que... Mira, el Saba es un jugador que, que está en un momento muy bueno en, en, su, en su carrera eh, y después de tantos eh, momentos difíciles para el Damir, yo creo que en este momento está a donde estuvo en 2021. O sea, físicamente, mentalmente eh, y la habilidad de definir. Esas son cosas que... Son, son muy clave. Claro, los pibes querían jugar, pero también hay un proceso eh, donde no podemos arriesgar. O sea, el equipo anda bien cuando estamos rotando y para mí es, ten, vamos a tener un, un julio lleno de partidos con equipo de México, con, con también en agosto tenemos el, el, el Open Cup. Así, eh, son decisiones que tenemos que tomar para, para el salud del, del jugador. O sea, porque todos quieren jugar. Y, y esta rotación a, a veces eh, me, me pongo en, en la oficina y, y estamos hablando una hora con un jugador porque me estás contando por qué debe estar jugando y, y le explico, somos un equipo, ganamos juntos y perdemos juntos, pero son, claro, son jugadores clave y ahora que tenemos una semana para entrenar, Claro, los dos van a estar listos para salir titular. No, lo decía por el resultado, ¿no? Que, que te veo un poco, porque se, se, se ganó un punto, pero que tú sabes claramente se tenía que haber ganado sí. el, el partido y porque el equipo lo mereció, ¿no? Uh -huh. Digo esto que, que al final debe estar contento, porque sí, el equipo está sí, jugando no, estoy, a un nivel altísimo. Estoy. Si me preguntaba si quiero 0.1 punto, punto to, quiero el 1. Claro, al fin quiero el 3. Pero después de las llamadas la, la llamada que cuando se enteró el bar, esas son cosas que no podemos afectar y son dos goles. Y ganamos el partido 4-2. ¿Y en qué así, momentos? Y son momentos clave. Y afecta la emoción del juego, la psicología del jugador. Y, pero estoy contento con el 1 porque sacamos 7 puntos en los tres partidos. Eh, lo que yo quiero es los tres puntos para la afición. La afición merece los tres puntos en casa y, y, y eso me deja un poco... Pero llegará. Pero llegará. No, rapidito nada más. Jugando fuera se está sacando resultados y, y perfecto, excelente. Tal vez no hay la forma de cambiar. En casa hay que ser protagonistas y buscar el partido, por supuesto. Pero si se cambia la tónica a jugar como se juega fuera, sin mucha presión, esperando a que te vengan a buscar el partido y lo sacas el resultado como lo te podría. ¿Has pensado en algún momento eso? ¿De, de qué? Pregúntame de nuevo. Esto, esto. De que jugando fuera Ajá. es diferente porque buscas el partido, esperas a que te vengan, uh -huh. tú sales, sí. contra ataque los agarras, pero aquí tratas de ser protagonista Ajá, sí. y ahí es donde te contratan sí, y sí. te ganan el partido. Sí, Piensas y... cambiar esa posición, esperar a que te ataquen y vas al contra ah, 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 mejor, tenemos que, tenemos que hacer algo diferente y yo creo que eso, si, si viste el primer gol que hicimos en, en St. Louis, eso fue de puro contragolpe y claro, porque como decís vos, el equipo en casa tiene la, la responsabilidad de jugar un lindo estilo de fútbol, pero también sacar el resultado. De visitante, resultado. Y el equipo en casa debe ser el que juega un, un lindo estilo. Yo creo que podemos ser los dos. Hay que ser más inteligente en, en pocos momentos, pero también, a lo mejor, de, de mi puesto, tácticamente, hay que esperar un equipo un poco más eh, para crear el espacio donde podemos atacar. So, Vamos a mirar el video uh, de este partido, pero el, el próximo partido eh, de visitante, así vamos a estar preparados para ese partido. Epa, epa. Ok, gracias. Thank you. Gracias.